Praise God. I want to thank you once again for joining me today. And um, I want to thank God for the opportunity He has given us to live in a time like this. Uh, for the opportunity and the privilege He has given us to know the Lord Jesus if you've already been born again. And if you're not born again, the privilege and opportunity for you to be able to know Him. Because for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believe in Him will not perish but have everlasting life. I just give thanks to God. Um, we will be starting a new series of teaching today by the special grace of God. Um, we want to talk about the issue regarding the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are still talking about Jesus. We are still talking about the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. But by the grace of God, we are moving the focus a little bit forward. And this was something the Lord started laying up on my, hand, on my heart. For, for some time, I've been looking at the study of the end time, the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, for, for, a, for some time. But in the last couple of months, few months, um, I believe the Lord has quickened and placed this burden on my heart to look at this subject a little bit more closely. So, like I said, we are still talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to be talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. We're still talking about Him with respect to the end time. So, I'm going to be looking into a couple of things with respect to the end time and I believe that the Lord is going to bless us exceedingly. Praise the Lord. But before we start, I think I should um, explain one or two things about the title that I've given to this series and I've called it Mara Nata. Mara Nata. Now, that is actually an untranslated Syriac word that we see in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 22. And I will read that. It's 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 22. In that verse, in the King James um, translation or version, or translation, I should say, of the Bible, the, by the providence of the Holy Spirit, Two words were left untranslated into English in the King James Version. So let me read that verse for us in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 20, 16. Sorry, I will say that again. 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 22. If any man love not the Lord Jesus, let him be anathema, maranatha. Anathema is a word in Greek that was left untranslated, which means accost. So, if any man, if any woman does not love the Lord Jesus Christ, he or she has left himself or herself open to curses. Because if we don't accept him in this life, we'll be judged in the last life. So, we're not talking about that in this series. But one of the things that you will see is that as we begin to talk about the end time, we are talking about the second coming of the Lord, we'll be talking about reward, and we'll be talking about judgment. Reward to those who have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Reward to those who have submitted, uh, who have submitted themselves to the kingship, to the kingship and the reign of our Lord Jesus Christ. Reward to those who have lived their life in holiness and righteousness. Reward to those who have walked in this life in the fear of the Lord. But judgment to those who have rejected Him. Judgment to those who have not submitted themselves to the Lordship of the Lord Jesus Christ. Judgment to those who have rejected the good news and have passed into eternity without accepting him 
as the propitiation of their sin who have not allowed the blood of Jesus to cleanse them of their sin. But like I said, we'll be focusing on the second untranslated word, which is Maranatha. Maranatha is actually a Syriac word, and it's a compound word. Maranatha. So like I said, it's a Syriac word, and it has two words, which means the Lord cometh. The Lord cometh. Mara, Lord, Nata, come. The Lord come in. And this word is a motto, it's a wash word that urge us to be prepared for the Lord's coming. And this is why I've chosen it as the, the title for this series. Mara, Nata, the Lord is coming. The Lord Commit, and and this is very very important because when we talk about the end time, I want us to realize that we are talking about God. The end time, as we begin to talk about the end time, as we begin begin to talk about the events that are going to happen in the end of time, I want to emphasize i want to underscore that it is not about the events it is not about any denomination it is not about your interpretation it is not about my interpretation it is not about the antichrist it is not about the various nations that are going to play a vital role in the event that will unfold at the end time I want to emphasize at the beginning that our study of the end time is primarily about God. Let me read from the book of Revelation, chapter 19, verse 10. Revelation was the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we're going to come back to the book of Revelation somewhere down the line that the Lord helping us. When you read the book of Revelation, at the beginning the Bible says this is the revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ, which he has given to his servant John for the church. And in this book, the Holy Spirit by his angel, the Lord by his angel on the Isle of Patmos gave to John a series of end time apocalyptic visions of what is going to happen in the end time and he showed him various vision but at the end of this book after this angel has showed John various visions something happened in Revelation chapter 19 verse 10 the Bible says in the King James Version John said I fell at his feet to worship him and he said unto me, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. So John has been given this extraordinary, tremendous vision of what is going to happen in the end time. The church, the world, the events, and this was overpowering and John fell at the feet of the angel but the angel told him don't do it don't worship angels don't worship man we don't worship angels we don't worship men thank God for people for men and women that God has given to be a blessing to be the the vessel through which God has blessed our life has brought us the word of God has brought us the anointing of God but we don't worship men. We don't worship a denomination. We don't worship somebody's doctrine. The angels told John, don't do it. See that, see thou do it not. And I want to tell you, my brothers and my sister, don't do it. Don't get involved in any way, in any form, 
in any fashion in human worship. Now, many of us, if not all of us, are not going to go into what I will call straightforward idolatry, bowing down to an idol that is cast in gold and in wood. But unfortunately, there's a lot of idolatry in the church. We worship personality. We worship um, somebody's uh, um, outlook in life. We worship somebody's, some people worship a denomination. No, we respect men. We give thanks and glory to the to the gift that God has given to the body. But like the angel told John, see thou do it not. See that you don't get caught in worship of a personality, in worship of a particular um, exposition or a particular doctrine. Always, 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 always worship God. Worship God, he said. Worship God. Men and women are only important to the degree that they bring us to God. You remember that story of John the Baptist? When he, when he pointed out that Jesus is the one, the Messiah, the Lamp of God, okay, that was to come. And his disciples left him and they followed Jesus. <laughs> I will read that verse again, um, Revelation chapter 19, verse 10, but I'm going to read it from the New Living Translation. John said, Then I fell at his feet to worship him, but he said, No, don't worship me. I am a servant of God. Oh, how we need to remind people that often and often, I am a man like you are. Just like Paul said, I am a servant of God, just like John said. I am a servant of God, just like you and your brothers and sisters who testify about their faith in Jesus. Worship only God. But now I'm going to the next phrase. For the essence of prophecy is to give a clear witness for Jesus. The essence of prophecy is to give a clear witness for Jesus. What I was what I'm trying to establish is as we begin to talk about the end time. The end time events, we are going to be talking about prophecy. We've mentioned briefly about <clears throat> the prophecy, the future event that God revealed unto John. But that we should not be caught out with the event itself. The event is only important because the event reveals Jesus. The essence of prophecy, the essence of end time prophecy, the reason why we've come to study this is because we will see Jesus. The reason why we've come to study this is because we want to know Jesus. The reason why we've come to study this is because we want to know God. Prophecy is one of the marvelous ways that reveals to us the nature of God, the majesty of God, the power of God, the sovereignty of God, the wisdom of God, His holiness, His righteousness, prophecy is absolutely absolutely key to our understanding God. Unfortunately many of us have been discouraged from studying prophecy either because we think it is difficult to understand and let's be sincere you remember Peter was writing about the writing of Paul he said there are some things in the writing of Paul that are difficult to understand so Yes, it can be difficult, but most things that are valuable in life need effort for you to get them. A good wife, a good job, a good husband, good children need effort. Good guarding <laughs> need effort. A clean car needs an effort every day, every week maybe. 
So yes, it can be difficult, but it is not impossible. And we have the Holy Spirit. The Bible says the Holy Spirit will guide us into all truths. And God has given gift in the body to help us. Okay, but Peter also said that yes, some of those things in Paul's writing is difficult to understand, but not impossible. And he did say that some people twist them. Now that is the other reason also when why people don't study prophecy. Because I have to agree with you that there are so many twist, so many confusion. But we must never throw the baby out with the bathwater. Prophecy is very important and that is what I want to focus on as we move on in this study. So I'm establishing by the grace of God that this study of the end time is about God. If you, if you are studying prophecy, if you are studying the end time because you want to prove your point or you, you want to show that you have all the, you know, all the, um, all the knowledge and you have all the data and you have all the flow chart, that is not the reason why we study prophecy. We study prophecy to know the pressure, the purpose, the will of God. Prophecy shows us, like we read over there, the, the angel told John, he said, for the essence of prophecy, the essence, the heart, the reason for prophecy, is to give a clear witness for Jesus. Let me let me read this from some other version, if, if uh, translation, if I can get that. Okay. Um, New International Version says, "For it is the spirit of prophecy who bears testimony of to Jesus." Okay. Um, let me read down and see that. International Standard Version says that worship God because what Jesus is saying is the spirit of prophecy. Now let me let me move down a bit and see if I can read one or two other things here. Weymouth, Weymouth New Testament says testimony to Jesus is the spirit which underlies prophecy. The essence of prophecy, the spirit which underlies prophecy is the Lord Jesus. So as we study prophecy, as we study the end time, as we study this event, understand that the end time is about God. It's about God, His nature, His plan, His purposes. The end time prophecy is about the Lord Jesus. He is the essence. He is like that way Mount New Testament says that he underlines, he, he underpins. Prophecy is a tool to reveal Jesus, to reveal God. It's a servant. Okay? Just like, just like that angel is a servant. Prophecy is a servant to bring Jesus, to bring God, to bring the heart of God, the majesty of God, the will of God to us. And this is very important. Prophecy show us the glory and the majesty of the Lord Jesus. So we, we are not waiting. The prof prophecy is not about the Antichrist. We are, we are not expecting, we are not waiting for the coming of the Antichrist. We are waiting for the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, in, in, in that revelation, we will talk about the end time event. We will talk about the Antichrist. But understand the focus. You know, this reminds me of what happened when the Lord Jesus Christ went with his parents the first time to Jerusalem when he was age 12, going to 13. And the Bible says that in that process, they lost him. They forgot him. So as we study the end time, as we study this event, don't you ever, don't we ever forget the heart, the essence of the end time we will we will read about judgment we will read about events we will read about personalities we will, but understand that it is about god it is about the nature of god it is about the majesty of the lord jesus 
our blessed hope is the appearance of the Lord. Our blessed hope is the appearance of the Lord. Yes, His appearance will occur in the environment. There will be various end-time events and processes taking place. But those events are only as important as they take their bearing from the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? And this is very important. So these are some of the things we are going to be studying. And I'm trusting the Lord that as we move on in this study, the Lord will really help us. And one of the things I've realized in getting prepared for this is that I will need all the help of God that I can get. And you will need all the help of God that you can get. Because as soon as you start studying the end time, you will begin to face the reality of the challenges both physically, expositionally, emotionally, spiritually, that the challenges that come against you. But I believe God and I want to pray that the Lord himself will grant us grace, that the Lord himself will anoint us to, to understand, to know him as we study together. God bless you.